Welcome back to the I Don't Want a Divorce podcast. I want to thanks, thank uh, those of you who have participated in our recent uh, contest, podcast contest. Uh, you might be married to a narcissist if fill in the blank, but we had a ton of responses. And as you can see, the last three podcasts I did ba- on those responses, we had so many. I thought it was very helpful to highlight um, what living with a narcissist is like and giving those of you who are going through that a voice. So thank you so much for that. Enjoyed that very much. In fact, if you're finding my podcast helpful, uh, subscribe to this podcast and to my YouTube channel. Leave a five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. Boy, that will help us grow our audience and have more and more of an impact. And frankly, the kind of advice I'm giving, you're not going to hear from any Christian counselors. That may have dawned on many of you. If you've listened to the YouTube channel, my Ask Dr. Clark videos, these podcasts, this is not all the way through my training and all the way through my career. I'm not the usual Christian counselor. I'm not like super sensitive. I'm not like passive. You know what? I, I, I kind of go for the jugular. I'm kind of, I do. It's very direct. It's very clear, but I think it makes a difference. I've seen that over 35 years. God use this approach. Today, I resume my series based on my divorce recovery book, I Didn't Want a Divorce. We've been going through this. Now we're getting near the end. Hope it's been helpful. Today's topic is a particularly important one, how to get rid of your guilt for the divorce. So many spouses after a divorce that has not been their fault end up, you know, blaming themselves and feeling guilty for the divorce. God doesn't want that. Before I get to today's topic, I'll answer a question from a podcast subscriber, a question pertinent to what I'll cover in today's podcast. Here's the question. And I get many questions like this. My ex-wife had an adulterous relationship with a co-worker, okay? Her fault, her affair. She filed for divorce, okay? She filed, and she's still with the other man, okay? This is a, his ex-wife was a female dirtball. She had an affair. She didn't stop it. She filed divorce. She's still with the the dirtball, okay? My Christian, here's the key. My Christian counselor told me recently that I am partly at fault for the divorce. No, you're not. That's my editorial comment. He said my mistakes in the marriage, being a workaholic, too critical of her spending, not being romantic, all true, were a factor in her affair. No, they weren't. That was her choice. You could have been the worst husband in the world and and it wouldn't make any difference. That's her choice. He says, and this this is a good question, is my counselor right? Do I have to take any blame for the divorce? No, you don't. You see, I've already kind of started to answer his question. My answer is this, very simply, number one, get a new Christian counselor, fire this one. He or she is way off the track. How dare anyone blame you for choices made by your ex? Number two, you have zero responsibility for the divorce. Zero. That was your wife's decision. And she had no biblical reason. In fact, you had biblical reason to divorce her. You didn't. She divorced you. You have zero responsibility for her adultery. Again, that was her decision, not yours. Makes no difference what you were like as a husband, and you you made some mistakes. Those pale by comparison to her adultery, by the way, and any choice someone else makes to sin is 100% their responsibility. Number three, your mistakes as a husband, your sins as a husband, did hurt the marriage. Okay, let's be honest. You need to own that. They hurt the marriage while you were married. But her decisions, her sins of adultery and a divorce are 100% her responsibility, not yours. Now let's get into this a little further because I don't want you to feel, and more to the point, God doesn't want you to feel guilty for your divorce. Satan certainly does. He wants to have you tortured for weeks, months, years. God doesn't want that. I want you to get going in your new life. Okay, I start this with, with what a client has said to me in session. I know that God has forgiven me for my mistakes in the marriage. This is the client talking to me. I know that the divorce was my ex-spouse's fault, not mine. But I don't feel forgiven by God. See, there's the but. I don't feel forgiven by God. I still feel tremendous guilt for the divorce. Okay, so here's the case where intellectually she gets it. She understands that biblically she's not at fault. But emotionally she's blocked. That's where Dr. Clark comes in. Here's my response to her. You are a lot harder on yourself than God is. You are continuing to punish yourself for sins that God has forgiven and forgotten. What you're feeling is false guilt. 
Intellectual acceptance of the truth isn't enough. You have to take the right action steps to emotionally accept the truth. That's where a Christian psychologist comes into play. I continue to tell her, once you have directly faced your mistakes as a wife and admitted to your responsibility for each one to God, you will feel forgiven by God. And once you feel forgiven by God, you can forgive yourself and all others who caused you pain in the divorce. What happens is you, you know that you were guilty as a spouse, okay? You made mistakes in the marriage. What Satan's going to do, what you'll do to yourself is you'll dwell on those mistakes as if those mistakes caused a divorce. They did not. They caused marital problems. They didn't cause the divorce. Here's some sources of false guilt. It's common, in fact, almost everyone does it for divorced persons to feel guilt for their divorce for years, not weeks or months, years. It's easy to focus on your marital mistakes and continue to blame yourself for the divorce. I see this over and over again. In my in-person sessions here with the blue with the blue couch in my office slash studio and over the phone on my phone advice sessions. Your ex, who is 100% to blame for the divorce, feels no guilt at all. You've noticed that, haven't you? Doesn't seem fair, does it? Your ex seems very happy. Everything's going great for him. He's spending time with the kids. He's found a new victim. I mean, partner, maybe. They look so happy and you're miserable. So it looks like it's your fault. When you look at the two pictures, he doesn't feel guilt. Just because he doesn't feel guilt doesn't mean he's not guilty. He is guilty of sin. Your false guilt is a form of denial. If only I'd been a better wife, we wouldn't have gotten divorced. If only I'd gotten us to counseling earlier, we wouldn't have gotten divorced. If only I had fill in the blank, we wouldn't have gotten divorced. This kind of distorted thinking, even though common, keeps you in a never-ending cycle of false guilt and false shame. The misery, however, is real. And others certainly contribute to your false guilt. Your ex-spouse will enthusiastically blame you for the divorce. He loves the fact that you're miserable and that you're taking the blame. Loves it. He has to justify his sin and look good, and you're helping him do that. He's thrilled in his nasty little mind that you feel guilty for the divorce he caused. Of course, these guys are dumb enough, abusers especially, to actually believe that it was not not their fault and it's all your fault. So your ex will hammer you for the mistakes you made in the marriage, even though they had nothing to do with the divorce. And I wouldn't be surprised, because I see this a lot, if your pastor and your Christian counselor hold you responsible, at least in part, for the divorce. They can't seem to help themselves. They want to balance things. Yeah, well, they think part of the healing is, well, but you, you did contribute to the divorce. No, you didn't. Those are separate categories, marital issues and divorce. So these well-meaning but clueless helpers want to blame both spouses for the divorce because it seems fair. Well, it's not true. So therefore, it's not fair. And of course, Satan jumps all over this. He wants you to be ag in agony over the divorce and feel badly and have trouble coming back to the Lord and being happy in your life. He doesn't want any of that. He wants to limit your effectiveness as a Christian. As I have stated before, you are 100% responsible for your mistakes in the marriage. Fair enough. Every spouse makes mistakes that harm the marriage. You are 0% responsible for the divorce. Okay, the key to emotionally accepting this truth is embracing God's forgiveness for your mistakes in the marriage. That's what your ex uses against you, counselors use against you, your pastor might use against you, and that you use against yourself, these mistakes. So you have to own them and feel forgiven for those marital mistakes. This is part of loving yourself. God wants you to love yourself. Read the words of Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 22, 36 through 39. He's asked a question and he gives a response. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, no hesitation. When, when, you, when you're God, you don't have to hesitate. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. You hear many sermons on the first part of that, loving God. You hear very few, if any, on loving yourself. Because as Christians, it feels uneasy to love myself. But that's exactly what God is saying here. It is essential to the Christian life to love God with everything you have in you, no question. It's equally essential, as the verse says, to love yourself in a healthy, God-honoring way. By accepting God's forgiveness for your mistakes in the marriage, whatever they were, you are loving yourself. With your false guilt gone, you can forgive yourself and others. 
there are many pastors and they're well-meaning who say, you, you don't forgive yourself, that's what God does. Well, yeah, yeah, technically true, but practically not true. We do have to forgive ourselves. We're harder on ourselves than God is. Now, feeling God's forgiveness is a key part of forgiving yourself. When you get yourself and your issues out of the way, you can fully love God, that's the point. Okay, here's the truth about forgiveness. One verse sums up all you need to know about the intellectual part of God's forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, and this would include all marital sins, all sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's it. All the cults that you'll see are unlike Christianity and that we have, they have to continue to work for forgiveness of sins. We don't. We ask, we have it. All you have to do is admit your sins to God and he certainly forgives you. To fully accept the truth in 1 John 1, 9, which you're having trouble doing, most of you who have been divorced, and experience God's forgiveness, his total forgiveness, you have to do the emotional work. Again, I want you to follow my template. I have explained the template of forgiveness in previous podcasts. So go back. If you want to uh, look at that template, of course, it's in the, in the book, I Didn't Want a Divorce. Let's follow my three-step forgiveness template and get rid of your false guilt once and for all. It starts with verbal venting. Talk through with God, your recovery coach, and your Christian therapist all the sins and mistakes you made in the marriage and in the divorce process, all of them. Identify each sin and describe its impact on your ex and the marriage. Don't be general, be specific and detailed. Don't just justify your behavior, own it. Don't justify, own. When I'm dealing with folks on the phone and phone advice or here in my therapy office with a blue couch, I make them be very specific about their their sins and mistakes. Give, don't, go, don't go general, that doesn't heal. What heals is specific, frame by frame, all right? You, you give me a category and give me some examples in that category, now we're talking. Second is the throw up letter, all right? You've, you've now explained, uh, you've verbally vented all the mistakes you've made, now you're gonna have to do a throw up letter. This letter will be to your ex, though he'll never see it, you're not sending it. In a sense, this letter and the forgiveness letter to come are also to God because he is the one whose forgiveness is important. You don't need your ex's forgiveness, all right? Not that you'd get it anyway. You need God's forgiveness. Okay, here's a very brief section. I wanna pull out just a few words here of one client's throw-up letter to her ex. Bob, it's always Bob. Bob, part of my healing and forgiveness process is admitting my sins and mistakes in our marriage. I take no blame for the divorce. Okay, she's making that clear. That is entirely your fault. But I do take complete blame for my sins in the marriage. I tolerated your anger and did nothing to stop it. She's admitting that. That's a sin. I didn't demand apologies after your outbursts. I didn't provide any consequences. So I was an enabler of your anger and that was my fault. She's owning it. His anger is his fault, but her enabling of it is her fault. She continues, I did not give you enough physical affection. I know it was important to you, but I didn't work on this issue hard enough. I know this hurt you, but I didn't care enough to fix it. That was my fault. She's owning that. And many wives would have to admit this. I just, I wasn't into the physical part. Now, part of that's because, okay, the guy was treating you badly, but still, let's be honest, it was an issue. And in her case, it was even from the beginning of the marriage before the problems happened. I focus too much on the kid. She's admitting that. I can see that now. Many wives and moms focus too much on the kids and neglect the husband. Okay, it's a fault. It's a sin. Our kids' needs came first and you got the leftovers. Many days I had no time or energy left for you. She's owning it. She's admitting it. That was hurtful and wrong and it was my fault. Now she talks about money. I spent too much money, Bob, and I never stuck to the budget. That was That's a weakness of mine. I wasn't taught as a child, whatever. My fault. I have no excuse. I know my spending stressed you and hurt you. That was my fault. Okay, you're going to read this completed letter to God, your recovery coach, and to your therapist. Now this, of course, is a brief section. Your letter could be 10 pages long. Your throw-up letter, easily. I've had 10, 20, 30, 40 pages of women just pouring out their feelings. Men don't uh, talk that much or write that much, but again, the more detailed, the better. You're, you're airing it all out, every mistake you made. Not every single one, but you cover the waterfront in terms of the categories, give examples. Next is, it, following my template, the forgiveness letter. All right, I'm not gonna read this, but she has a brief, the same lady has a brief section, okay, for, of forgiveness. 
She is admitting her mistake. She covers him briefly, and then she owns, she accepts God's forgiveness, and she's asking for his forgiveness, even though she doesn't really need that. All right? In fact, she says, I don't need your forgiveness for the things she mentioned, and I won't ask you for it. Uh, but I do need God's forgiveness, and I'm asking for that now. So it's all about God. Doesn't need her, his. All right? He may offer it on his own someday, probably not, but she needs God's forgiveness. And in this forgiveness letter, she's asking him for it. And at the end, she makes the statement, I will feel no more guilt for my mistakes in the marriage. I will not feel any more guilt for the divorce. I'm moving on with God's total forgiveness. You read this completed forgiveness letter to God, your recovery coach, and your therapist. And then I recommend a final prayer. I recommend to achieve emotional and spiritual closure. You've already done the work. A brief prayer, accepting God's forgiveness for all your sins in the marriage. You can pray this alone or with your coach or therapist. You can, words, you can use words like these. Dear God, I have admitted to my ex-spouse and to you all my sins in the marriage. You have. I am sorry for my sins. I thank you for your forgiveness and accept your forgiveness. With your forgiveness, I don't have to feel any guilt for my mistakes as a spouse or for the divorce. Okay, now you're doing well. You're on track in the healing and forgiveness process. It's time to forgive your ex. That's the next podcast, forgiving your ex. That's a tough one. The other steps in previous podcasts and in, of course, the I Didn't Want a Divorce book are kind of a prelude. They're foundational. Now you have to forgive your ex. It won't be pleasant. It's hard work, but you can do it. Now remember, all my resources for marriages in crisis, books, podcasts, Focus on the Family videos, Ask Dr. Clark videos, and my phone advice service, which many are using, are on my website, davideclarkphd.com. That's Clark with an E, davideclarkphd.com.